Yes, 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 yes. That's it. That's it. Hey guys, I think it's time for another FC1 video. I got some parts to put on the bike. Let's go. In this video today, I'm not doing a performance mod. I'm actually doing some preventative maintenance. Uh, three or four weeks ago, I was riding the bike and I came home and I'd taken the helmet off and uh, it seemed like I was hearing a little extra noise coming from this side of the engine. Uh, it wasn't too, too loud. It was a slight whirring or grinding sound. It wasn't uh, real obnoxious and maybe I'm just hearing things, but I went on the forums and started reading and I found a few guys had had rotor stator failures. Uh, that got me thinking some more and looking some more, read some more, and uh, a few guys had actually heard the noise and were inside of here and they found the bearings were bad. Now, I don't know what fails first, but in my, my thought process is that possibly the bearings go first and that causes heat and uh, uh, vibration to go into the rotor stator and, and cause those to fail. I'm not sure. But just in case, I went ahead and uh, the box that came in the day were the two bearings and a new gasket to go on the cover here. So for right now, I'm just going to go in here and change these bearings. Hopefully one of them is bad and that would explain the noise. Obviously, if the rotor or stator are damaged in any way, I'm going to order those parts. But if they're not, I'm going to change the bearings and put it in here and just keep an eye on this thing over the next couple of weeks as I ride it. But uh, I've never been in here. I don't know what's in there, uh, but we're about to find out. So here we go. The manual details the items to be removed and the order in which to remove them. It calls for the seats and fuel tank to be taken off and the oil is to be drained. But I opted not to perform these steps and don't see the need to unless you suspect damaged parts are in the engine. Begin by first removing the starter coil lead assembly from the regulator rectifier located under the subframe. The bolts that secure the cover to the engine are then loosened by a one quarter turn in a crisscross pattern. There are two sizes of bolts that must be loosened. Next, the manual describes removing the center plug to allow access to the rotor shaft. Go ahead and remove it. Now those three Torx head bolts surrounding the plug do not need to be removed at this time. And finally, all of the bolts are to be removed from the cover and set aside. For this next step, you may want to have a towel to catch any small drips of oil as you prepare to remove the cover. I began by slowly pulling gently around the perimeter of the cover until I could grasp the assembly and remove it from the engine. The starter clutch assembly, spacer, and washer were then carefully pulled out of the case. I was able to get access to the rear rotor bearing and check it for any abnormal wear, as well as inspect the idler gear. Now, if the rear bearing is to be changed, it would be necessary to remove the idler gear, but in my case, I feel that the rear bearing is in good shape. The old gasket can now be removed from the generator cover and discarded. Now next was the part that I was really dreading, but it was time to separate the rotor from the stator and see if there was any damage here. The magnets are quite strong, so you will need to get a good grip on the rotor housing to pull it off. In my case, I was relieved to see that there was no sign of any damage or wear, and the stator and rotor both looked as good as new. Finally, I needed to check the outer bearing, so I decided to just slip the rotor shaft into the bearing from the outside to see if I could feel any grinding or wear. I was happy to see that this bearing seemed to have no indication of being bad. After a further close inspection of all the parts, I decided that I would just button everything back up for now without even changing the bearings. In the end, I just couldn't justify the cost to replace the rotor and stator when the ones in the bike look and perform like new. The starter clutch is assembled on the back of the rotor prior to installation. 
With the three dampeners in place, the primary drive gear is placed into position, making sure it is fully seated. Next, place the innermost washer followed by the first spacer. Now you will notice that this first spacer is symmetrical, so it can go on either way. Just make sure that the necessary parts have a coating of oil as indicated by the manual. Place the starter clutch drive gear into position on the rotor shaft, giving a slight twisting motion to get started. Then use pressure all around to get it fully seated into the clutch rollers. You can now check to make sure the clutch works by ensuring it is free to turn clockwise, but that it locks when turned counterclockwise. The rotor and clutch assembly can now be placed back into the motor. You will know it is all the way in when the edge of the rotor is flush with the engine casing as shown. With the two locator pins in place in the engine case, the new gasket can now be installed. Here I'm using a long 5mm hex ball drive tool to hold the rotor from being pulled out. As the stator magnets get close, there will be some pulling force, so be advised to keep the rotor firmly seated. Once the case is correctly located, a slight tapping around the perimeter will help get it fully seated. Go ahead and reinstall the bolts into the cover, hand tightening it first to ensure proper threading. Once all the bolts are snug, the manual calls for the large M8 bolts to be tightened first, followed by the M6 bolts. All bolts are to be tightened in a crisscross pattern. While the manual does call out specific torque specifications, I simply went by feel. Now, some of you may wish to use a torque wrench here. The small black plug can now be reinstalled and tightened. And finally, plug the generator lead back into the regulator rectifier and you're done. Okay, so that's the end of this short video. Hope it helped. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Stick around. More is on the way. Um, if you have any questions, email me at patrick at copperdog.com and we'll see you around the next one.